Hello, this is Peter from Wham Bam, and I want to talk today about the best way to mount your magnetic base to any machine. There's a few choices to be made, and I'm going to show you on a CR10 V2 that we just got here, uh, which presents a few problems that we have to talk about. So, first thing we need to know is how to get the right size Wham Bam flexible build, sit, uh, build system for your 3D printer. Uh, do not just go by the build volume that they publish online because you actually have to measure your heated bed X and Y accurately to know the size. So in the case of the CR10 S Pro and the V2 and the X, it's actually 310 millimeters by 320 millimeters. That measurement is the size of the kit you must buy. That way we can get the build surface to cover the bed completely and allow you to print to the maximum possible. Once that's established, we have to decide where to put the magnet. Are we going to put the magnet on top of the glass bed plate? If you have a machine that the bed is removable, it is advisable to, to mount it to your heated aluminum bed but before we do that we have to confirm if your aluminum bed is flat and planar not all manufacturers ship a flat heated bed so the way we do this is we take a steel straight edge we lay it on edge we get down at eye height and we can shine a light behind it here you can see it's bowing a little bit in the middle I'm going to put the ruler across horizontally. It's not so bad here. I'm going to put it across here. We have a little bit of a bow. This might not be an optimal bed. We can try here. That looks pretty good. Here across this way, it looks pretty good. Here there's a bow towards the back and a bow in the middle. So we've got a little bit of a bow in this area right here. We have a few choices. We can either try to straighten out the heated um, aluminum base by removing it and gently caressing it over our knee. We could use some aluminum uh, foil and shim this up, or we can mount to the glass plate. In this case, I'm gonna to show today how we mount uh, to the glass plate in two different methods. The first would be if your machine has these bed clips, remove them completely from the machine and we want to mount your glass plate to the machine, but what's going to keep it down? One thing I do suggest is to get thermally conductive silicone. You get these sheets here. You'd have to get, they're usually sold in 400 length by 200 and they're cut a little poorly. This one's beaten up. I've got a couple on the order. Uh, and you lay this down to your bed and cut it to size. You do not want the thermally insulating silicone, you want the thermally conductive. And what this does is it creates a bonding layer to the glass plate and it conducts the heat very well through up to the glass plate. This is a nice method to do away with your bed clips and to mount directly to the machine. Um, then you would mount your glass plate over the top of that. I would flip it over. Uh, these kind of ultra base style uses glass, but they actually print a plastic layer of texture on the top to help it to grip well. But that printing layer can actually inhibit the magnet from sticking very well to it. So I would turn the bed over and clean it if you're going to do that. I do not have on hand the silicone, so I'm going to show you the other way of mounting. We can mount the glass plate onto the machine upside down. We will clean it before putting on the magnet, but just to show you what we have to do. And we have the issue of these bed clips sticking up. So I can cut out the magnetic base. When I do that, I need to rest the magnet beside it to make sure that the bed clips do not stick above the magnet. In the case of the Creality machines, the little tab on the front was sticking up too high. So I actually ground these down a little bit just with a grinder or a Dremel tool so that they're not higher than the one millimeter magnet. And actually I'll show you right now, I cut out the magnet so it would fit over these nicely. And I can then lay a ruler across here and be sure 
that the metal is not going to interfere with our flexi plate. If it does not, you're fine. So I am going to mount my magnetic sheet right to the glass plate, put it back on. I have altered the clips so I can keep them and therefore also remove this glass plate. There's also an advantage in doing this. That way you can remove the glass plate if you ever need to with the magnet. Um, for example, changing machines or changing heated beds. The only drawback is, of course, you've got to be able to heat up the glass plate before you're heating the magnet and your flexi plate. So you're adding a layer of insulation, which takes a little more heating time. Uh, I would prefer mounting directly to the aluminum bed, like I said, but you have to have a flat bed. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to apply the magnet and be back in a second. Okay, I am ready to mount my magnet to my glass build plate. So first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of all the finger grease and all the oils and inhibitors that would keep my 3M from bonding. So I'll use some isopropyl alcohol, the highest percentage possible, to really cut through that grease. And I'll clean that well. And I'm going to do that again and turn over the paper towel. And I'm going to do it again one more time with fresh paper towel. I don't want to be cleaning off the grease and putting it back on because my paper towel is dirty. There we go, now we have a clean bed that we don't want to touch. Okay, next I want to be able to get my magnetic bed, turn it over, and I want to pull up my 3M tape evenly for about one inch or 30 millimeter strip. Now where it was cut out, you have the risk of the paper tearing when you're pulling it off, so I like to pre-lift up all the corners. And I start to peel this back do not touch the 3M while you're doing this. I like to pull it back a generous one, one and a half inches, 30, 40 millimeters. There we go. And I expose a nice even portion of the 3M and I crease my backing paper nice and cleanly. Okay, now we're ready to apply it. And what I do is I lean it onto my glass bed and I keep the, Mac, the exposed 3M elevated so it doesn't make contact until I have this well lined up. And I could actually almost lean it because it's not making contact and be sure that my back edges are aligned and my front edges are aligned. And when I'm pretty sure, I go ahead and I just rub down that front edge. You don't want to lift up the magnet once the tape's been put down. That's a very permanent tape being. Now I lift it up and I grab my backing paper with one hand while I keep the whole magnetic plate elevated. You can see I'm exposing about half. Keeping it elevated then I rub from the center and outward. Now you could do this for the magnet by hand. You could use a roller. I tend to use the roller especially for installing build surfaces on the kit to ensure that we don't have any air trapped underneath. And always work from the center outward. I'm gonna pull back paper, keep it elevated, go up the center and go outward. Pull back paper, go up the center and go outward. You can do this by hand for the magnet. If you have a roller, all the better. There we go. And we have a perfectly installed magnetic base. If you ever clean the top surface of the magnet, you want to make sure you don't have pools of alcohol on there because the magnet has been covered with a lacquer to keep preserve it for longevity. So we don't want any solvents or a lot of alcohol to pull on the top surface. So if I want to clean this, I might just go very lightly with some alcohol on a paper towel and quickly clean that and let that dry off before I put on the flexi plate. Okay, we're going to mount it to our machine. Gonna make sure that it gets underneath the rear clips. There we go. We're going to put on the front clips. Okay, 
pretty decent job. I've got a little bit of an overhang over here that I want to trim with a razor blade so I don't have anything lifting up in the future. I'm going to trim that right now and we'll come back and text, test the flexi plate in a second. Okay, the magnet's been installed on the glass base. Uh, the glass base has been applied to the heated bed. And I'm just going to test it by laying the flexi plate on the top to make sure that there's nothing that's inhibiting the flat surface, that these clamps are not raised above the surface of the flexi plate because that would create a non level surface. I haven't installed the flexible. Uh, excuse me, the build surface, that's fine. Now we're going to test all over again and be sure that we have no gap. This looks beautiful. I test right across the clamps. Looks absolutely beautiful. That glass was super flat and because of that we have a very flat surface. We've got amazing magnetic force. There's nothing lifting it and keeping that separated. And I'm ready to mount the magnetic surface, excuse me, I'm ready to mount the build surface and finish mounting the machine and I am in action. And I hope that this is going to help you in determining your bed size, in determining the best place to mount your magnet and different ways of approaching it. When my um, new silicon pads come in, I'll probably also do a secondary video showing how to use the silicon pads to prop up a glass plate. And of course, the last thing we can always do is try to ease the heated aluminum bed as, f as flat as possible, especially if you're using some kind of a bed leveling sensor or mesh leveling. You can have that very minor bow that's in there and the leveling sensor is gonna make up for it. But I like to have the machine perfectly flat and level before I go forward. So that's it, enjoy, and I hope this works for you.